Hello, are you out there? Is this thing on? Yeah, I'm Mark, Homebrew Fever Dreams, and I found this on r slash Homebrew Fever Dreams, uh, the subreddit that I do. Uh, Warrior Button helps me with this as well. But um, I haven't read this. Story of the worst player I have endured so far. This is coming from Nolua Luis. Lucy? Lucy? Okay, let's just do this. Short disclaimer, this story is not about D&D, but TDA, The Dark Eye, a German-developed TTRPG. Now, as you could guess, English isn't my native language, I'm s so I'm sorry for the bad grammar. That's fine. I'll forgive you, and I apologize for butchering what you've written. So, this story will be quite long, as it contains three campaigns we had, of which two were canceled prematurely. For the sake of privacy, I will be calling the player I'm referring to this post to Jürgen? Right? You don't say the J, it's J, like Jaeger, like Pacific Rim, Jürgen. <laughs> yeah, I think so. As that was one of his two character names. The campaigns were digital. We played on Discord with bot integrations. Sweet. I've been playing TTRPGs for eight years now. It was 2019, and I haven't really had any campaign to run at the moment. So I organized one myself with five friends. We decided to play TDA as that was the TTRPG I was mostly familiar with. It all seemed to be going well. Me, who is basically the all-time DM, decided to run a prison break. The players agreed and actually found the idea quite intriguing. So we f started the campaign. We had a half-elf rogue who was in prison for spying, a pyromaniac dwarf wizard, <laughs> and a human rogue who was a kleptomaniac. So two rogues, one pyro. Sounds like the perfect perfect blend. A peasant who killed a nobleman. And the last person, Jürgen, a nobleman who didn't really have a reason to be in prison. Okay. Wow, that's quite the... But the peasant is just a peasant. No peasant class. Okay, I'll give you that. In, res in retrospect, I really shouldn't have let him play a nobleman in a campaign like this. But he was really wanting to. I informed him that in prison the, and the country we were in, his title wouldn't have much power. To which he first agreed and said, okay, that makes sense, but even though we early agreed on his noble heritage not really having benefits, he later seemed to dislike that. We'll see. Well, I could understand in prison the noble title not having much of an impact, but out... In out of prison, in the in in a nation that his nobility is the power structure of, there should be benefits. Now, if he's in a nation where his nobility isn't what the power structure is based off of, then kind of limited. I mean, unless you're rubbing elbows with some other princes and princesses, you're not going to get a lot out of it. Okay, let's keep going. TLDR, they escaped from prison and were on the run, then arrived in a village where they got their basic equipment. Jürgen was suspicious of the village and decided to charisma roll not only the villagers, but his group members. A little social PvP here. Okay. As he thought, my character would distrust such criminals and peasants, which is kind of logical. <laughs> <laughs> At this, he noticed that he didn't gain any advantage, even with the simple peasants. So, he sat down with me after we stopped playing. He told me he wanted to have advantage on charisma checks in a skill that he can use because of his noble heritage. I, as a DM, trying to be fair to the other players, told him he is not able to do that. To which, he still added the skill to his list and didn't inform me about it. Ooh. Okay, that's... Not cool. Even though this already should have been a red flag about what's to come, I continued playing with him as he was my friend. Was was like slanted was like as in he's not like italicized because he's not your friend anymore. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully he's still your friend. The campaign ran like this for a few weeks until we got he got a second complaint. He was of the opinion that. We should switch VC so only the players are in the VC of whose PCs are present in the scene I'm narrating. Voice channel. No. You wouldn't do that. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's so much more work for the DM. I mean, whatever logic there, there could be and how cool that would be. Like, just imagine if you're 
you had to pretend you were the old telephone operator flipping switches like, all right, who's in this scene? Who's not? Click, 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 click. Just a mouse click on the screen, check boxes. You shouldn't have to do that. That's ridiculous. Besides, you're all sharing the experience together. You, you, unless it's a secret where deliberately you need the PC to keep that information to themselves for the time being for some dramatic reveal later on, no. Everyone shares in the, the adventure and the drama at least player meta, meta level together, okay? Maybe not at the character level, but the, the meta level for sure for the players. Oh, the word meta. Huh. <laughs> he, he didn't have fun if the other players had meta knowledge of what he did when he was alone or with another PC, and he wanted to have bigger immersion. So because I wanted to guarantee fun for everyone at the table, I agreed to him and tried it out. I don't think it's a bad thing to try it if you're willing to, but that type of fun isn't what the role-playing system in role-playing in general is about. It's, it's just not. I mean, you don't have three, four, five, six people at a table with the DM and everything's compartmentalized for whoever's in the scene. That's, that's not how role-playing tables work, folks. It's just if you're willing to try it, that's cool, but I don't see that working. I don't think the other players would like it because I think other players would be bored as heck being shunted off to the side while a scene might be going on for 5, 10, 15 minutes. No. Nah, that, that's why it, it's not a good idea. Time, time in. Let's continue. As I agreed on this, Jurgen decided to split from the party to investigate the mayor of the town. So he went on about an hour being alone, only with me, in a VC, talking with the mayor. After that session of basically four of my players having to sit alone in a VC, waiting for so something to happen, I realized my mistake. But now it was too late. No, it's not. You could always say, hey, we tried it out and it didn't work. It's never too late to go back on something that it's breaking or harming your campaign. All right? You say something, you may take it back with an explanation of why you're doing so. Yes, you do have to explain the take back, but if it's for the benefit of the table, never hesitate to take something back or to uh, nerf nerf something that is damaging the, the fun uh, and the, the, the viability of the table. Let's continue. Um, where are we? Uh, but now it was too late. As he was threatening to stop playing if I stopped playing by his by this rule, his rule, this rule. As I didn't want to argue with him, I went along. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call another time out there. That's fine, but then you limit anyone's solo play session to five minutes per player involved in the scene. So a single player in a scene gets five minutes max. Two players in a scene, ten minutes max. Three players in a scene, five minutes max. All the players in a scene unlimited time so you see how you can add that caveat you never dictated or promised that it would be an unlimited scene for somebody or that they could just run on as long as you can you can just be okay well you talk to that person that's wrapped up now and say oh, no i have more questions and say oh, no the person uh, tells you they have something they need to go do and they show themselves out of the room it's over so <laughs> there's ways to handle this i don't know if this is going on right now or if this is a story from the past but that is how you'd handle that. If if you were unwilling to amend the, the whole private VC immersive shenanigans this guy got you up to. Mm. Every session, he walked off alone until our half-elf tried to bring him closer to the group so they could do stuff together. In response to this, I even put up a dungeon to which the group decided to go. Now the group tries to solve a riddle. Once again, he splits, this time together with the human rogue. He finds a golden statue and tries to run away and split completely from the party. The half-elf again comes to rescue. I myself am pretty helpless as I didn't know what to do. I'm so fascinated, OP is to how long ago this happened. You, you said you've been playing role-playing games for eight years, but is this current? I mean, I would love for it to be able to like, give you advice on how to solve this right now, like, which I'm doing, because yeah, you're letting a, you're letting a, pl a player just, <laughs> just, just make the table what they want it to be. 
you know, I, I know it's all through voice channels and stuff, but you're just like, this is what I want to get out of it. Screw everything else. Screw what it's meant to be a collaborative storytelling opportunity. <laughs> they have zero interest in that. They just want your time to play with them and their interests. Anyone who's willing to split from the party on a regular basis for up to an hour at a time doesn't need anyone else there and has no interest in them being there. That's just the brutal truth as evidenced by their behavior. <laughs> Now, in this story, we had the same characters before, with the exception of me playing an elf sorcerer. Oh, wait, I'm so sorry. Complaining, not giving an advantage. What, where the heck are we? Even though all, this was all pretty annoying, and I'm not really, and not really a horror, we somehow finished the dungeon and went off from the village to a city where I tried to interrogate his noble background more, so he would stop complaining to me, me about not giving him advantage. Advantage on persuasion rules that's he thinks because he's a noble interesting he he thinks nobility is like a currency so for instance if there's an npc the npc's like i don't got time for your nonsense i've got other customers and you're like here's a hundred gold pieces on the counter do you got time now an npc is gonna like yeah i got time for a hundred gold pieces i got more time for you so this noble player thinks that nobility is a currency that can be spent that way. Again, to certain people in certain governments, certain societies where the nobility matters, it's true, but certainly not across the board. Couldn't they have just given themselves proficiency in persuasion if they'd wanted that? Uh, uh, advantage, we'll say. Um, I, I guess your system isn't D&D, &D, but yeah, they should have just built that into their character if that's what they wanted. Let's continue. I don't know where this is going. And this is a, a long one? Yeah, we got a ways to go. Let's find out. To sum up what happened in the city, Jurgen went on solo half of the time and displayed a big main character syndrome while I was trying to put up a story. Yeah, if you're the DM, that's your job. I shortly after they talked their way out of a fight with the BBEG, found a way to end the campaign, and let my other friend, who was playing the half-elf in the group, continue DMing. Okay, cool. It's good to let other people step up to the DM plate if they want to. That's reasonable, and it gives you a chance to play. Now, in this story, we had the same characters as before, with the exception of me playing an elf sorcerer and Jurgen. He put up the same character with a different name, but all the skills he wanted in the first campaign. As my friend, let's call him Elpwin, <laughs> decided to give them to him. That's good and that's cool dm can let jurgen play the character they want and give that okay that there's nothing wrong with that so good on elpwin for helping with the character that jurgen wants to play but the specialized rules that you and jurgen put together <laughs> about the private immersive vc chats Ooh, I really hope Elpwin does not move this to the second campaign. That sounds like catastrophe waiting to happen. And boringness. And boringness for pretty much everyone who's not in the VC at the moment. So, yeah. This time, he had his noble privileges. My friend, not being quite aware of Jurgen's main character syndrome, gives him a letter at the start of the campaign which should initiate the main plot. We were on a ship traveling to Pirate-esque town. Yeah, the Pirateville. We know what you mean. <laughs> but this nobleman with a letter, doesn't want to talk with us, and goes alone all the time while hiding the quest that was given to him in the letter. <laughs> he basically tried to solo the campaign because he was of the opinion that sticking with a group of strangers, aka adventuring, wasn't what his character would do. Ugh. As we arrived in the pirate town, our DM made a murder happen, hoping that now we would investigate what was happening together, which actually happened. We went and try to investigate the murder. Now comes the big problem, though. As Jurgen didn't like the intrigue dash political focus, sorry, I want slash, intrigue slash political focus, we had and deemed it unrealistic, while also being of the opinion that the investigation RDM Elfwin gave us was too hard. He said he wanted a pause from the, the campaign, to which we paused and stopped playing entirely because the DM was also tired with his behavior. Let's call a timeout there. 
You guys are friends, or six of you, right? DM five players, it sounds like. You certainly don't need to boot Jurgen from the group, but it should be established in the group that a democratic vote carries the day on how the game and the table are to be run and special rules considerations. Certainly the active DM could get two votes, thus breaking any tie between six real people. Five players and DM give the DM two votes. DM doesn't normally have to vote necessarily. You could let the players decide, but you know maybe they put in if they need to push the vote one way or another, if there really is an issue where it's too close to call, right? But in general, if you have five players... Or five people out of six who are like, yeah, we should play the game this way or that way, or we like to do the murder investigation, but Jurgen doesn't. Then Jurgen has to suck it up and go with the majority. That just is the logical way you do any sort of group friend activity. All right. So I mean, again, if this is an active problem we're working through here, I mean, clearly not. We're there's multiple campaigns, but just to, I guess advice to people watching is. Take a vote. <laughs> Majority rules. Yeah. Time in. Okay. Personally, I argued a lot with Jurgen during the second campaign because he wasn't ruining my fun, but the fun of everyone besides him. But since the campaign has ended now, I didn't really put any effort into arguing with him about the game. I mean, I was not playing with him, so I won't put any effort into changing his behavior. Okay, you weren't. I mean, I was not playing with him. After the fact, okay, but you're going to play with them again, so vis-a-vis. Uh, -vis. Listen, one player Jurgen wanting to stop the campaign should in no way have stopped the campaign. It's just like, oh yeah, take a break, man. Jurgen can go on a business trip for noble reasons, and when he returns, he may rejoin the adventure. But if everyone else wants to keep playing, you keep playing, folks. I mean, that's just like, again, like super, super common sense. Let's keep going here. Okay. Forward to about 2021, I have been running a campaign with four other friends. In this campaign, we had a knight with noble background, a mercenary, a dwarvish blacksmith, nice, and a human wizard. The campaign was going really good. The group was involved in a military campaign, thus fighting against enemy soldiers. After they were finished, they ran into a misunderstanding and were accused of a murder of a nobleman making them flee the country. It happens. It happens. Jurgen approached me and asked if he could join. Well, this is one year later, so I thought maybe he's learned from his past mistakes. Oh, that's the wrong question, OP. If you're the DM, the question is, have you learned from your past mistakes? Not if Jurgen's learned. <laughs> Jurgen's not blameless, but the mistakes, my friend, are yours, not Jurgen. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler, I was wrong. Let's keep going. Jurgen joined the campaign and took one game session of three hours to argue with the group why he should come with them. The only way I get him to join the party is by saying his hometown was in danger and needed people to travel with to be safe. He went with that and the campaign was fine. They came to a cultist-infested village and were trying to find a magic item. Jurgen... Uh, I'm doing that in my campaign right now. <laughs> Jurgen, being in this small town, had no chance of, to split off, so, but basically overshadowed the other players with his presence. Our noble knight, because he was new, was overwhelmed with him. Our dwarf was basically permanently insulted by Jurgen's PC, and our mercenary tried to protect our knight and ran into constant arguments with Jurgen. I was tired of this and, tire, and tried to lead them to what they were searching for. Let me play out the situation. Me. You see a shadow-like figure roaming through the village. It is heading towards the mill. What do you do? Rest of the group, we follow Jorgen. Me. You all follow the figure? Jorgen. I did not say I follow. I do not. Don't take my agency away, you asshole. <laughs> we argue for about ten minutes until I mute I am on the server because I wanted to continue playing. Instant message? You muted it? Okay. Right after the session, Jorgen told me, after the next session, I'll quit. So I had to cancel all my plans because 
I had now planned for them to travel to Jurgen's hometown to defend it from danger. So I ended the campaign prematurely, next session after they finished their quest in of the village. I never asked him to be in one of my campaigns again, but from that time to time, I, but from time to time, I'm still reminded of this story when I have to think of players keeping information or trying to lone wolf through a game. I personally think that I shouldn't have given him what he wanted and also could have continued the third campaign after he left, but past is past. I hope this post isn't too convoluted in any way. Also, sorry for the length. I didn't know how to put it shorter. Uh, no, I mean, it wasn't convoluted. It, it read really well, and I, I found it pretty interesting. I, I hope a lot of other people did. Jeez, I, it's painful, though, to get through a story that is that long, that is over three distinct campaigns, and have one problem player continue to harm the campaign, and that you folks, not just you... OP is is the one DM, but the your other friend, I can't remember the name, but two different DMs couldn't handle Jorgen. In the friends group, meaning the five players in the DM, couldn't collectively handle Jorgen. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, Jorgen sounds like a nightmare player to have at a table. I mean, definitely... He's the kind of guy that after, like, the fifth session, you would be like, oof. Is there a way we could squeeze this person out? This isn't working too much, right? Because because it is like Jorgen just kept coming back to campaign after campaign and just always played the same noble? It, just the same class, the same modus operandi every time. And it was always just to the detriment of everyone else's adventure. <laughs> it's It's really weird. It's like a little pathological of being like, this whole thing of like that it, it takes time to convince him three hours to convince Jorgen's character to join the party. That's a character that doesn't want to be an adventurer, therefore should not go on adventures. That's, well, okay, listen, OP, it's a great story. Thank you so much for posting on Homebrew Favor Dreams. I really appreciate it. You might have cross-posted this in other places, but um, I enjoy it. Thank you so much. I invite anyone else to, to post here. I will read your story. This is only a handful of stories I've ever gotten on this little subreddit, so thank you very much. Um, I hope you've learned a lot. And honestly, now that I think about it, the whole idea of the RPG horror story genre that we all partake in by writing the stories, reading the stories, making videos about the stories, is a good form of entertainment it's a good form of catharsis but it's also educationally really good because i have a feeling op that had you known that rpg horror stories or D, &D horror stories or homebrew fever dreams and existed back eight years ago when you're getting into your tabletop role playing you would have been familiar with this these styles of players these types of characters that don't want to adventure and well, now you know. And um, I guess in that sense, spending all this time on the horror stories is a useful tool if people heed the lessons that we are reading about. Other people's horror stories and nightmares at the table educate us on how to be good players, how to be good DMs, and how to run characters that are suitable for the adventure that's put before them. That was a long one. If you watch, thank you so much. Take care.